One of the most powerful ways to use factoring and to apply it in Algebra 2 is to allow us to solve much more complex equations. So in this mini lesson, we're going to talk about solving equations by using factoring as our solving technique. The reason we can use factoring as our technique for solving an equation is because of this fact right here. If a product is zero, which means if you multiply two numbers and get an answer of zero, then one of your factors must be a zero. There's no possible way to have an answer of zero through multiplication unless one of the factors is equal to zero. So in the statement here, if a times b is equal to zero, either a has to be zero or b has to be zero. Now, technically, both of those could be zero, but we're going to focus on the or ID here in our problems. Okay? So with this fact known, we can look at an example like this. So here's something that's already been factored. I have the factor x plus 7 and the factor 2x plus 3, and I'm setting this equal to 0. And we'll talk about when you want to do that in a moment. But the key is to set any type of equation that you want to use factoring as the solving technique. You want to set the equation equal to 0, thus factoring it, and now here's what we have. x plus 7 is my one factor. If this factor were ever to equal 0, then my whole equation would equal 0 because if this was let's say negative 7, negative 7 plus 7 is 0. And 0 times whatever that thing is, it doesn't matter what it is, 0 times whatever that is is going to be 0. So we're going to take this factor and find out when this is equal to 0. And as I've already mentioned, we know this is going to be negative 7. So that's one solution here. However, this doesn't have to be 0. What if this one was 0? So why don't I set this one equal? 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. And when I solve for this factor, I'm going to get 2x equals negative 3, and x is going to equal negative 1.5. That's what I get when I divide negative 3 by 2. So in this first example, if my x is negative 7, this factor will become 0, thus making the whole equation equal to 0. In this example, or in this factor, I'm sorry, if this is negative 1.5, and I add, or I'm sorry, multiply by 2 and add 3 to it, that's going to be 0, thus making this equation, these two answers are the possibilities here. Let's look at one more example of a problem already factored. Here's a problem that I have factored already that actually had a GCF in it of 3. In this case, I have three different factors, 3, x plus 1, and x minus 3. So I'm going to take each of these factors and set it equal to 0. One thing to point out, though. You don't actually have to take the GCF and set it equal to 0, because if you do, you're going to get 3 equals 0, and there's just no way you can turn a 3 into a 0. So this isn't a possibility. But x plus 1 most certainly has a chance to be 0, because if I subtract 1 from both sides, if x were to be negative 1, negative 1 plus 1 is 0, thus making this entire expression become 0 through that product property. Lastly, if I take this, x minus 3 equals 0, and we solve this, I'm going to get 3 as my other answer. And so for this equation, my two solutions will be negative 1 and positive 3. Now, if you haven't already done so, please pick up this worksheet. At the top, it says solving quadratic equations by factoring. We're going to go through a couple of these problems together to see how we can solve equations through factoring first one I would like to look at is number one. So number one here looks at x squared minus 4x equals 0. This equation under our traditional ways to solve equations is not possibly, cannot possibly be done by inverse operations. So what I must do here is look for a factor that I can pull out. This, doesn't, this isn't a trinomial in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So I don't need to factor it using either the snowflake method, grouping method, or other methods we talked about in class. I do see, however, there is a GCF of x in each of these terms. And so if I factor an x out, that remain, the x squared will become x, and I factor out an x from the 4, and that would give me 4 here. So my factored equation is x times the quantity x minus 4. I need to consider what situations would cause either of these factors to equal 0. So my first situation is looking at this x. So quite simply, if x were to be 0, 0 times whatever that is is going to still be equal to 0, thus being one of my solutions. 
this expression right here, x minus 4, I'm going to set that equal to 0. And upon solving that, I'll see that x could also be 4. So for question 1, my equation x squared minus 4x equals 0. If x is 0, the equation is going to be equal to 0. And if 4 is equal to x, then my equation likewise is going to be equal to 0. If we move down to number 6, we'll jump around on here. Taking a look at number 6, I have y squared minus y minus 6 equals 0. This is a trinomial that we can factor either using grouping, snowflake method, or guess and check. This one's fairly simple, and if you want to set up the snowflake for it, go ahead. This equation, again, don't forget it's equal to 0. And before I do this, double check always for GCFs in the trinomial. There are none here, hence why I'm jumping ahead to the factoring. So this actually is going to end up being y minus 3 and y minus, or y plus 2 here. So this is my factor equation here. I have factored this trinomial into this form, and now that it's in this form, I can now solve for each of the factors. So if y minus 3 is equal to 0, and I'll write that over on the margin here, and I solve that, y equals 3 is one of my possible solutions, because 3 minus 3 is 0. If I take this factor to the right here and do the same thing with it, y plus 2 equals 0, y here is going to be negative 2, thus again having two possible answers. When we're working with quadratics, most of the time we will end up with two different answers. That won't always be the case, and we'll explore that later on in this course. Right below here is number 7, and I just want to point out that here is a situation where I actually have a GCF. So do not forget, when factoring, you must always check for GCFs in a problem before you can start factoring using grouping, snowflake, or so on. If I pull a 3 out of this, I'm going to end up with u squared minus 4u plus 3 equals 0. And from here, I'm going to stretch it down into this white space here. When I factor that, we won't use the snowflake here, but if you like, go right ahead. This form right here, u squared minus 4u plus 3, when I factor that using whatever method you want, I am going to end up with u plus 3, u plus 1, and that's equal to 0. Don't forget there's that 3 sitting out front. I'm now going to check each variable factor. And I say variable factor because you don't have to check 3. Because 3, there is no way 3 could ever equal 0. No need to check that, but I would want to check this u plus 3 is equal to 0, u plus 1 is equal to 0, and upon solving each of these I get u equals negative 3 and u equals negative 1. We're going to take a, one, take a look at one last problem and that's going to be on the back of this worksheet and that's going to be problem number 6. So on the back side here x squared equals 10x minus 25. The problem with this that's different than all the other examples I've gone over with you on this video is that everything is not on the same side of the equation. I have x squared on the left side and 10x minus 25 on the right. In order to successfully use this strategy of solving equations through factoring, I need everything to be on the same side and my equation to be equal to zero. Now we're going to try to leave this x squared as positive, thus making our factoring a little easier. And so when I do that, I'm actually going to move the 10x to the other side. And again, when you're solving an equation, you just perform the inverse operation to move it to the other side. So I subtract 10x on both sides. Those would cancel, thus the other side would have x squared plus 10x. I would also add the 25, again, an inverse operation. And so my equation simply is going to be x squared plus 10x. That's a minus 10x typo there. We'll fix that x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 0. Now that I have this set here, I'm going to factor this. Again, use which method works best for you. Take a moment. If you want to pause this and try it yourself, please do. So the values I end up with here is x minus 5 and x minus 5, and that's equal to 0. So, so now what I want to do is find out when each factor is equal to 0. So x minus 5, whenever that is equal to 0, my entire equation will be equal to 0. This would solve to be x equals 5. When I do this other one, however, I'm going to get the same exact thing. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, this is one situation where you actually only have one answer. 
because each of these factors is x minus 5, meaning the only number that would ever cause this equation to equal 0 would be the number 5. And so this would only have one answer as x equals 5. This concludes the introduction of the mini lesson of solving equations using factoring. What I would like you to do right now is look for instruction on what problems to complete from this worksheet. Because there's not a lot of space on here, be sure to have a separate sheet of paper out for you to do your work. Again, please feel free to rewind this video, look at additional examples, and let us know if you have any questions.